Well, welcome to the first of this series of podcasts on the endocrine system. But before we get down to talking about the endocrine system specifically, I want to tell you about glands. So firstly, simply, what is a gland? Well, a gland is a structure which produces and secretes some sort of chemical product. So a gland is going to be a localised anatomical structure. Very often you might get many similar types of gland spread over an internal or external surface, but they are specific anatomical structures. And the first thing we notice about glands is there are two types of gland in the body. They are exocrine glands and there are endocrine glands. Now an exocrine gland will export something from the gland via a duct. So exocrine glands produce their products and deposit them locally via ducts. Therefore, the product from an exocrine gland will act locally. It is not a systemic effect. It does not affect the whole body. Therefore, the product from an exocrine gland will just be deposited in or on part of the body. So an exocrine gland is producing a product which is then directly exported from the gland, usually via a duct, onto some internal or external body surface. The product from an exocrine gland does not go directly into the bloodstream. Now, some exocrine glands are described as unicellular. This means that the gland is just composed of one single cell, whereas other exocrine glands are multicellular. These are more complex structures with a duct to deposit their product onto some internal or external body surface. So, for example, you might have heard of goblet cells. These are a unicellular gland. They are just one cell. Of course, there's many millions of them, but each gland in itself is only one individual cell. They are unicellular. Now, the reason they're called goblet cells is they look a bit like an old-fashioned drinking goblet, which is upside down. For example, there's lots of goblet cells lining the respiratory mucosa, where they produce mucus. This mucus is deposited directly onto the external respiratory surfaces where it moistens the top of the respiratory epithelium and protects it against foreign materials and infection. And you might remember that once the mucus has been deposited onto the respiratory surfaces in the trachea and the bronchial passages, it's cleared by the action of cilia, which waft it up towards the trachea via the mucociliary clearance system. And then there are many different forms of multicellular exocrine glands, but they all have secretory cells which produce a product and a duct which transports this product to where it's going to be released, to a release site. So we could think of the sweat glands over the surface of the body. They produce sweat in a glandular section, and this is secreted onto the surface of the body via a sweat gland duct. Or you might think of the mammary glands in the breast which produce milk or the sebaceous glands associated with the hair follicles, which produce sebum, or the three pairs of salivary glands producing saliva and depositing it inside the oral cavity, or the digestive system where there's lots of glands producing digestive enzymes and secreting these into the lumen of the digestive tract, where they're going to break down our food products into more soluble, absorbable components. Or you might think of seminal fluid, part of which is produced by the prostate gland and deposited into the urethra to provide the fluid component of seminal fluid in which the sperms are able to swim. So as you start learning more about anatomy and physiology, you come across lots of glands that produce a product and export these products via a duct. These are the exocrine glands. Now, the other classification of gland is the endocrine glands. So endo means inside, and endocrine glands release their product directly into the blood. So the chemical produced by the gland in this case goes directly from the cells of the endocrine gland where it is produced into the bloodstream. And the chemicals produced by the endocrine glands are endocrine hormones. And because the product is released directly into the blood, these are absorbed systemically and travel all around the body. So the exocrine glands were localised, the endocrine glands have a systemic effect. 
So this means that the endocrine glands do not have ducts. And in fact, in the old days, they used to call this the ductless gland system, which is a bit of a mouthful. So these days we call it the endocrine system. But the point is a genuine one. These are glands without ducts. They are ductless glands. So the product from the endocrine gland is secreted directly into the blood, which is passing through that gland. And this means that endocrine products are rapidly systemically distributed. Now, you probably know that endocrine products are actually referred to as hormones. And a hormone is a chemical messenger which circulates in the blood at relatively low concentrations. After being produced in an endocrine gland, a hormone circulates into the blood until it reaches a specific target tissue where it's going to have some sort of physiological effect. When it reaches the target tissue, the hormone, that is the endocrine product, will bind onto a specific receptor on the target cell in the target tissues. And it's the combination of the hormone and the receptor on the target cell in the target tissues, which then initiates a physiological response in the target cell. So these endocrine hormones, which are produced in one part of the body, are absorbed systemically and have physiological effects on other target tissues, often throughout the body. And this takes us on to the idea of signals and receptors. Because a hormone carries a chemical message, it's sometimes referred to as a signal. And a signal molecule has got a particular molecular architecture and a defined chemical structure. Therefore, it has defined chemical and electrical properties. And this means that the signal molecule will only bind to a specific receptor site. And receptor sites are made of proteins, and these receptor sites themselves are located in or on target cells. So in this situation, the hormone is analogous to a key, and the receptor is a lock. And a specific key is required to open a particular lock. Now, the cells which comprise the tissues of the body have many receptor sites on internal and external surfaces. However, it's only the signal molecule with the correct shaped key that can activate any specific receptor site. And this is all done on a molecular scale. So a target cell may have between two and 10,000 receptor sites for a particular hormone on it because these are actually receptor molecules. This is all done at the molecular scale. And signal molecules you might see referred to as ligands or ligands as well. It means the same thing. So in this form of terminology, the ligand is the key that fits into the lock. It is the signal that fits into the receptor. We're talking about highly specific signal molecules, highly specific receptor molecules to bring about specific controlled physiological changes in target tissues. This is part of the choreography or the conducting of whole body physiology in a planned, coordinated, systematic, highly regulated way. So let's think about some examples of endocrine glands. Well, in the head, you've got the pineal gland and in the lower parts of the cerebrum, you have an area of brain referred to as the hypothalamus. This also produces endocrine products. And then just below the hypothalamus, there's another endocrine gland called the pituitary gland. Going down into the neck, in about the same position as a bow tie, we have the thyroid gland. And embedded within the tissue of the thyroid gland, there's another type of endocrine tissue called the parathyroid glands. Going further down the body, in the chest, we have the thymus gland. And then above each kidney, we have the adrenal glands, the glands that used to be called the suprarenal glands. And indeed, the kidneys themselves have an endocrine function. And in the pancreas, we have the pancreatic islets, what used to be called the pancreatic islets of Langerhan, that secrete endocrine hormones. In women, we have the ovaries, and in men, we have the testes, which are also endocrine glands. And in this series, we want to go on and look at what these glands do in more detail.